Hi, I'm Daniel, I'm a sleep physician. And if you have insomnia, this channel is for you. Today's question, how is it that you can have ongoing insomnia even though the initial trigger is resolved? This is in fact a question from Mike. And again, Mike and everybody else who shared uh, stories and questions here on the channel, thank you so much because this really, as I said before, brings life to this channel. And uh, before I go further and, and read this email from Mike, um, as always, anything I talk about here is general advice, not specific advice to anyone out there. Let's get right to this email from Mike that I got uh, two days ago. And uh, in, in the previous episode, 76, I talked about Mike's uh, uh, first question, and here's the second one. Another question, and now that I think about it, why is it that a person can be a great sleeper and then a health scare comes around and causes insomnia, but when the crisis resolves, the insomnia still remains? Very good question and observation as well. And if you, Mike, uh, other people out there have not uh, seen Insomnia Insight number 40, Four zero, please, um, please do check that one out because that episode is about psychophysiological insomnia, which you are describing right here, uh, uh, Mike. So uh, briefly about that, what is what is psychophysiological insomnia? It's exactly this, you know, some type of um, life event, uh, some stressor causes insomnia even though that stressor is resolved, insomnia continues to be a problem. Now, why is that? Well, I think there are two things we need to talk about here. Hyperarousal and sleep cues. So hyperarousal, uh, talked about a little bit before, it's a kind of general state of stress and anxiety, um, which can be caused by, you know, any, any stressor really, but it puts us in, in, a, in a state of mind where we're kind of hyper aware of everything that's going on daytime as well as nighttime. If we before had kind of a brief awakening, we fell back asleep again. Now we wake up, you know, wide, wide awake and we have a hard time falling back asleep. We have a hard time relaxing. And that hyper aroused state that was triggered by, in Mike's case, a health scare related to his eyes, that kind of hyper aroused state is transferred from the initial trigger, the health scare, to the insomnia. So now the insomnia is the driver of that hyper aroused state. And uh, why is that? Well, one reason may be cues. So when we are having no problem sleeping, then um, certain cues are um, soothing and conducive to sleep. For example, uh, at night you may be turning off the lights in your house, you may be brushing your teeth, I hope you do. Uh, and you go to your bedroom and all those, um, all those things you do are cues, they're signals to you that you're about to go to bed and sleep and that's kind of, you know, when you have no problem sleeping, those are soothing, calming signals and you drift off to sleep. Now, as you develop insomnia, those cues are kind of reversed. Instead of, you know, uh, turning the lights off at night, having a calming effect, it's stressing. You're turning off the lights wondering like, what's night gonna be, how many hours am I gonna get? How, how, much, uh, how many times I'm gonna wake up, etc. cetera. And, and you know, all those sleep cues again have been reversed and are triggering insomnia rather than you know, being a calming influence. Cognitive behavioral therapy, of course, is there to reverse both the hyper state and uh, the sleep cues. Uh, when you use bedtime restriction, uh, limiting time in bed, you are trying to like, build up a sleep drive that overcomes the hyper state. And when you're using stimulus control, you know, you leave the bedroom if you can't fall back asleep and you only go back when you feel sleepy. That is trying to reverse this association of the bed and bedroom with not sleeping and kind of reverse other sleep cues as well in that fashion. Um, hope this is helpful uh, to you, Mike, and anybody else uh, listening. Um, any questions, uh, any sleep problems you have, uh, any other thoughts you want to share, leave a comment or email me at insomniainsight at gmail.com or send me a um, voicemail at 503-489-4802 and um, hope to see you back here very, very soon. One more thing, I almost forgot. I, um, 
have settled with uh, Podbean as a podcast host, and I'm using uh, I download another app to like be able to uh, edit podcasts. And I just like uh, 30 minutes ago submitted a request to iTunes where I'm starting for them to uh, review my podcast, hopefully um, approve it, and then it'll be live. I just called it Insomnia Insight with uh, Daniel Erickson. I'm just now gonna see if I can do the same for like the uh, Google uh, version and. Uh, Hopefully this will be a podcast very soon. <laughs> Thanks so much for, uh, for watching this and I'll be back shortly.